Okay, as you may recall in my video called Astrophysics 1100 Mount on the AP Eagle tripod, I had this adapter that I made up that allowed me to mate the 1100, the Astrophysics 1100 adapter, flat plate adapt, flat surface adapter to the Eagle tripod, which Astrophysics doesn't make. So I used a part from the Mach 1 uh, that was from an older version when I updated. You can see that video, that'll describe everything um, that I, at that time. So what I want to do today though is I got the aluminum plate machined and so this is the plate that I got from the machine shop. Now. I originally bought a piece of aluminum 3 8 inch thick by 15 inches by 18 and 7 8 It was a drop that they had from Tri-State Aluminum and um, they even shipped it to my house which was excellent. I didn't even have to go to pick it up. So then I went out to um, a machine shop out my way, Royal Tool and Machine in Northwood, Ohio and spoke to Massimo and he hooked, he hooked me up, told him exactly what I wanted. I uh, wanted a uh, 3 seconds hole drilled in the center of the uh, plate. Then I wanted a flat put on the back. And that will match up with the flat that's on the back side of the 1100 mount. So that's why I did that. Now they did a great job. Really happy with it. Nice and smooth. All deburred. Very nice. So this gives me something to work with. Now so what I have to do now, which I want to do on my own, is I'm going to locate these holes and transfer them to this aluminum plate. So I thought I would do this video and show you guys how, how that's done. It's very simple. It's not hard to do at all. Okay, so I've removed those two pieces from the wood. This is the original Mach 1 base that um, I kept when they came out with the uh, modified base for the Mach 1 with the um, azimuth adjuster to the rear. And then this is the um, 1100 flat plate surface adapter. So there's an S inscribed on here. This is the south side. This is going to be the south side of this plate uh, as it sets. So that's the right configuration here. So what I'm going to do next is take this outside diameter transfer it to this plate. That's why I had them put a circle here so I can lay this out and inscribe that diameter. Then I'm going to take a center line and go across here and then we'll take this uh, flat plate surface adapter get it to the outside and get these lined up here and then we'll go for it. Okay now here are my layout lines. What I ended up doing was I took a piece of cardboard and I did the test circle first on the piece of cardboard to make sure that it was right and then I transferred it onto here and then I put a center line going from that flat through that center line. Okay the next thing you want to do before you clamp this up and locate it is you want to get a transfer punch get the transfer punch that goes through these holes without any trouble. You don't want to force it through. You just want to be able to slide them through the holes so that when you put this plate on here and clamp it and you want to locate it and you put this in here and you tap it to transfer those holes onto this plate you want that ready to go. So that would be the next thing I would do is choose the transfer punch. Now you'll note that the transfer punch has what looks to be like a um, center center punch, which which it does, but this isn't to be used in the fashion of a center punch where you you hit it hard. You just tap it, and uh, once that is transferred to the piece of material, steel or aluminum, then you get yourself the the regular center punch, and then you can go ahead and make the heavier uh, heavier center mark. So. We'll go ahead and get this clamped onto here 
ready to transfer those up. Okay, so now I carefully lined everything up to my satisfaction. This is something you want to take your time on. Don't be in any hurry. No need to be in a hurry. Um, and I just used these quick clamps. They got rubber tipped. They clamp. All you need is two of them, one on opposite sides. And then I just went around and checked the perimeter and checked that these two holes here in here on the north and south side, again, this being the south, marked S, that they looked fairly lined up. Nothing more than that needs to be done. So now I'm going to go ahead and transfer those uh, holes. I've got them sitting up on some boards because obviously you've got the clamp underneath so I have some boards sitting under it. That's why it wobbled just a little bit to make sure that it uh, gives some base to it. Okay, so now we have that. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that every hole is done. Okay, and they are. So now that I've verified that each hole has been properly transferred, I can take the plate off, or the clamps, I can take the clamps off. And now, you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now you have all the holes that you need there. The next thing you want to do is use a center punch. So now we're going to go and take a center punch. This is made for heavy duty hitting. And we're going to Go to each one of those points. And we're going to make them deep so that we can drill them out. there you have it. Now you've got all the holes nice and deep and that has transferred the holes from that other flat surface adapter. So now we're ready to drill it out. So what I did, the next step was to take a center drill. Okay, I took this center drill which is nice and thick and stout, it doesn't bend, so that when you go to drill into material, it won't walk on you. So as you can see, I located all those holes with the center drill. So they're nice and deep. They go in there like that. That gives a good spot for your drill when you go to drill in there now. So that by using a center drill, which won't walk, if you've carefully placed all your holes, transferred them properly, did a nice good center punch, this should work out perfectly for you. Again, do use a center drill, okay? This is a number four. This is a number four center drill that I used. So now I'll go and I'll drill the holes out, and that part of it will be done for the flat plate surface. Okay, so all the holes have been drilled. And what I did is I started the holes. I went through first with a 964. Did a 964 drill bit, drilled all the way through, followed that up by the quarter inch. Now make sure you use good sharp drill bits, whether you have to sharpen them yourself or buy a new one. You don't want any issues. Just use a good sharp drill bit, get good on size holes. Now, I didn't want any slop. So I went quarter inch, I'm using quarter 
inch diameter uh, bolts, socket head cap screws. So let's see how that worked out. I initially was going to, um, I initially was going to um, tap the holes. I decided to just go ahead through and put uh, nuts on the other side. So there you are. Now there it is. Fairly nice. So that's how you locate that. And um, now we've got to do the uh, now we've got to do the other piece. That piece, which I've marked the south side, so that piece goes underneath. Okay. So then that becomes that adapter that goes to the eagle. So there's there's that. And if you're thorough, just do a good job locating, you won't have a problem. So locate it good, make sure you're on. Use a center, center drill. Once you've punched the holes, use a center drill. Because they're rigid, you won't have any problem with it walking. Then follow through with two drill bits. And uh, then what I also used was a router burr tool. And I used that, these holes, will tend to bring up a burr on both sides. So the way this tool is used, and I won't do it here now, I've already done it, you'll put it in a hole and you follow around and this tool will go around and it's got cutting edges. So if you're right or left handed, I would go around like this in the hole and that will follow right around like that and it'll just clean that burr off and give it a nice little almost as if you used a uh, counter, uh, countersink drill, but yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to give it a nice, smooth, and later I'm going to go over this whole surface anyways, clean it up, and use uh, Scotch-Brite. So at this point, I, I wanted all the burrs off of it. I didn't want any, uh, I don't want any burrs on it, so I did that both front and back. Okay, here you have it. It's all done. The other side, when I put the base plate on, this is the side that will receive the uh, Eagle tripod is the same process. I didn't want to bore you with the same thing. Same, same way of laying it out. Just carefully lay out your lines um, and uh, transfer the holes and drill it and deburr it. Same process. So uh, just follow what we did on the first side here. But there it is. Now one thing you'll notice I did do, this is going to go to a plater. I'm going to have a, a coating put on this. So, when I take this all apart, just so that I know the top, because in theory, this should, either, this should go to either side, but um, I want to put this on the exact same way. So I've um, stamped in here, top, I stamped it into it. That way, when it comes back, I know exactly the orientation of everything. And uh, this flat, when the mount goes on here, it's got a flat, so I thought I'd follow that same theme. I guess we'll see what that looks like. Because I think the other thing, too, is you've got that holder for the CP3. So that's another reason. Actually, that is the reason why I put that on there. So that way the CP3 clears this. So. Anyways, so there it is. I'm real happy with it. Um, I'll take it to the coder, and the next video that you'll see, the next segment, is going to show the completed plate with the, uh, and then we'll put the uh, 1100 on it, and we'll see what she looks like. Alrighty, I got my. Uh, piece of aluminum back from the platers the other day and uh, assembled the, the uh, two pieces to it to adapt this to my tripod and uh, very happy with the results. What I ended up doing, I uh, couldn't find anybody that would do the black anodizing in the Toledo area. One place said that they would do it, but not unless you're a company. They wouldn't do it non-commercially. So I ended up um, calling a company, 
hail performance coatings spoke to Ted Nye and they gave me some options over the phone I went out there and took a look at what he had to offer and I kinda like this color I thought it was a nice compliment it will work good also with the tripod um, and it also uh, protect the aluminum keep it from uh, from the aluminum uh, as it ages and um, out in the elements so what I ended up having them do for me was called a Teflon nickel glass bead. So that's what they ended up putting on here for me. And I um, was very happy. So now I guess we'll take, put it on the uh, tripod, put the uh, 1100 mount on there, and we'll see what she looks like. Okay, so there it is sitting up on the mount with the adapter on it. Now I'm in the garage here because it's very windy out and you wouldn't be able to hear me talk too well. So no use in doing that. But uh, so here you see the adapter right there. And uh, if I didn't use the extension, which I have on here for the CP3, which is this controller box, then... Um, you definitely would need a flat, um, but I put the extension on it for the heck of it. Without that extension, I would still have a little bit of uh, rotation and azimuth when I'm setting up the mount on Polaris, but uh, I decided to opt to keep the uh, extension there for the uh, CP holder, and uh, that way I won't have to worry. But in any event, turned out real nice. I'm extremely happy and um, was not a very cheap uh, thing to do by the time you buy the aluminum then you have to get uh, the machining done and uh, to make it a round circle and then put the flat on the back and then uh, have it anodized but uh, you know it looks professional very sturdy and um, what else can you ask for now that diameter of that aluminum plate that I did was nine and a half inches by three eighths inch thick. And um, I'm glad that I chose the uh, thicker mount, the, the, the thicker plate, because uh won't have any issues with that.